There are lots of people out there who will use this knowledge to exploit us for their personal gain. Hey everyone! I was talking with one of you about science, what it means whenever I say scientifically supported, what science is, and why I prefer to use academic sources. Merriam-Webster.com defines science as knowledge or a system of knowledge covering general truths or the operations of general laws, especially as obtained and tested through scientific method. So science is a system. And I also want to point out right here that science is not the same as academia, which is of, relating to, or associated with an academy or school especially of higher learning. Academia uses science, among other fields, and touts science and practically worships science, but academia is not the same thing as science. Those experts who sit up in their ivory towers all day, smelling books, I know technically computers are used more than books now, but smelling computers just, just does not have the same ring to it. These people cannot just come up with some theory or some speculation and call it fact until it has been rigorously tested and observed in the natural functioning of nature. That is what makes science. Science is testing. It is a system. And just FYI, just because I love science does not mean that I love all aspects of academia, but that is a topic for another time. I'm just putting that out there. These are not the same to me. Nor do I advocate following an expert blindly. When something is important and or sounds a little bit off, I recommend doing research and really digging into the topic. Test it yourself if you have the means. Or if you don't have the means, get a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth opinion, however much it really takes for you to understand what something is. And that is why I like listing my sources for these videos in my description box. I want you to know where I'm getting my info from. I don't want you to just assume that because I actually am degreed in psychology means that I always know what I'm talking about or to assume that because I'm trained in psychology, I can throw out speculation and call it fact. No, I get my sources from people who have tested this stuff rigorously in labs, controlled environments, or studied it, observed it in the natural world enough to where we can kind of understand what phenomena are taking place. I appreciate if you trust me that much, but I always want you to have the option of looking into the information yourself. You may be surprised to hear that I actually see very little raw speculation in the scientific system. Now, before you jump me for saying that, let's just look briefly at the scientific method. And if you're not sure what that is, the scientific method is a series of steps that allows you to test a theory or an observation and see if it really holds up in reality, whether something is fact or fiction. The third step in it is the only one that directly allows speculation. Even the first, ask a question isn't really speculation, it's more of an observation. It's just noticing something you're curious about and want to test. Step three is important for guiding scientific research, but it in and of itself is not what science is. If the testing process shows that, hey, maybe this hypothesis, this theory does not actually hold up in the real world, then either that hypothesis is discarded or it is tested again and again and again until an answer is found. So when I say scientifically supported, I'm referring to ideas, concepts, and phenomena that have been thoroughly tested, retested, discussed, until there is a darn good chance that a concept accurately reflects reality. Despite my personal hesitations about some aspects of academia, I do use academic sources because these sources must be tested. And any speculations that the experimenters or the academics do have, they are supposed to mention whether something has been supported by results of a study or if it is simply a speculation. This is what I theorize. 
but it was not actually supported in the experiment. Maybe we could do another experiment to test it out too. Now, in case you were thinking, Okay, science has been wrong before. Yes, that is true. Science is not 100% accurate all the time, and new findings are always coming out that do away with old ideas. Think about the idea that the Earth was flat. But the fact that we know better now is in big part thanks to science. Science is kind of like a person. We are always going to make mistakes here and there. We can always keep trying until we get better and better and better. And our knowledge becomes more and more complete. I mean, we have all no doubt heard about the big give and take, whether coffee is good for us. It seems like people just cannot agree on that. But I can say that testing out ideas through a standardized and effective method is a whole lot better at finding truth than everybody randomly saying their own speculations and their own opinions and going off of hearsay. I actually don't see anything wrong with personal opinion and speculation. It has its place. We know it has its place even in the scientific method itself. On occasion, I do use non-academic sources so long as it does not conflict with academic sources that I know to be very accurate and tested and validated. My problem is with people elevating their opinions and their experiences and their guesses to the level of fact. Here's an example that illustrates the problem with over-reliance on personal opinion. Not long after I released my ENTJ video, I got two messages from two different people. Both of these people seemed kind of miffed about something. One of them complained that my video had shown ENTJs to be too quiet. Should have been more vocal because they are an extroverted type and this person said that they scored he or she, I don't know, ENTJ on MBTI. The other person also scored ENTJ. This other person said ENTJs are the introvert and extrovert. I should have portrayed them as quieter than what I did. So I had one person saying that I had portrayed ENTJs as too loud and the other as too quiet. Hmm. By this time, I was kind of getting a headache. Another little fun fact, I have heard some people online say that ENFPs are the introverted extrovert, and I've heard other people online say that ENTJs are. Hmm. Well, it can't both be true as far as the general types. Do you see the issue I have? Both people were elevating their personal experiences and their opinions to a broad fact for the general rule of what ENTJs are like. I'm sorry, I am not here to please everybody's personal experiences and opinions because these are going to be unique to some extent to every person. I like going off of academic sources because yes, these are not 100% perfect and it doesn't mean that there will not be changes made in our understanding of these later, but scientific info has taken into account what has been studied, data from many different people to kind of find these common generalities, a holistic view of what a type is generally like in MBTI. It is not just a few people who say, hey, this is my experience, therefore it is fact. If you want to know more about MBTI, stereotyping and grouping, I did do a video on that. Go check that out if you want more info. One last thing before we wrap it up. Why talk about science at all? And specifically psychology. Let's make an analogy. You know how video games have a function, a program, that allows it to work generally well run and efficient most of the time, but sometimes you do have bugs. And if you find a bug, you're going to make the system very, very weird. Well, our minds are like that too. Our minds are designed for extreme efficiency and complexity, but because of the complexity, there are bugs in our system that can lead us to defective thoughts and defective behaviors if these bugs happen to be triggered at the wrong time 
the wrong place. Now going off of that analogy, knowledge is power for better or for worse. For the better, the more we understand about how our minds work and where these bugs in our operating systems lie, the less likely that we are to follow these bugs blindly into a bad decision, a bad habit. And the moment that we think we are above making these mistakes, that is the moment that we let our guards down and make us even more susceptible to making these very mistakes that we thought that we would never make. Now for the worse, there are lots of people out there who understand where these bugs are in our operating systems, some of the ways that they use it very neutral, or they use it in positive ways to nudge people toward better decisions, but there are lots of people out there also who will use this knowledge of our minds to exploit us for their personal gain. The more that we understand psychology too, the less likely we are to fall prey to those who would love to take advantage of us. 